Hello, I'm Telkini, and you're watching the Nerd Navigator. Come join me as I explore video games, movies, comic books, and anything else I can find. I'm Telkin, your Nerd Navigator. Before I jump into my commentary for the Nintendo Switch press conference, I just want to cover a few things. Uh, first, I have a channel growth goal. If by March 2nd at 11.59pm, uh, I have 2,000 active subscribers on the channel, I'm going to give away a Nintendo Switch to one lucky subscriber with the Switch that I pre-ordered already. So subscribe to the channel and like the videos, but most importantly, share out the videos so that we can get growth within the community. Uh, so we can navigate through the worlds of nerd together and bliss and harmony. Also, just so we can get to that 2000 mark and I, I can do the giveaway. If we don't hit that mark, I'm just gonna have to wallow in self-pity and play it myself to make myself feel better. Secondly, I know that some people are die-hard fans for Nintendo. I was a fan back in the Nintendo vs. Sega days, uh, much to the dismay of my girlfriend who loves the Sega Genesis. Much like anything else that we love, you know, pr passionately, uh, if there's anything negative said about that thing, that subject, that religion, that ideology, there's a tendency, uh, you know, for us to close our minds and only reflect on the negative. So if you feel strongly about Nintendo in a, in a passionate way, if you feel like you're going to have any kind of reaction to any negativity about Nintendo, please feel free to just st step away from the video. You don't have to watch this because right now, because you're, you're not going to enjoy this video and I'm not going to enjoy you watching it. I'm going to be pointing out the bad along with the good and there might be some fun made at Nintendo's expense along the way. With that out of the way, I just wanted to start out by giving kudos to Nintendo for one huge factor that is so prevalent within the current video game industry and that's the cash grabbing DLC. Now, because they maybe supplement that with um, the Amiibo figures, maybe that's why, but personally i'm not seeing like dlc in my face all the time from nintendo and so i give them kudos for that because it means that i can play their games to the fullest extent with enjoyment and not have to keep buying new add-ons and other cash grab stuff lastly before i start uh, commenting on the conference itself I want to let you know that I won't be using any video or images or very few from the conference as Nintendo is notorious for taking down videos or demonetizing videos that use their IP even if it's under fair use with commentary if there's basically any negative feedback given within those videos. So please enjoy my artist rendition of the press conference. Now starting out the press conference Nintendo showed the Switch console and the console dock which we've all seen from like the trailer or ad whatever you want to call it. They released a a while back ago. Then they showed the two-sided controllers, which they're calling the Joy-Cons, and the Joy-Con grip, which is the middle piece that connects the, the two side controllers together to make a more traditional controller. Although this looks extremely uncomfortable because it's semi like a brick with handles, but we'll have to see when, when we actually have it in our hands. And then finally they, they showed what they're calling the Switch Pro controller. They literally showed this for one second and this is not a joke but it should be uh it was literally on screen for one second and it's a disappointment as this is the controller i personally will be likely using for most of my time but they only want to show it for one second i mean i have no idea why um, unless it's because it looks exactly like the xbox controller which by the way, is not a bad thing in my opinion. I mean, go with what works. I have no problem with that. I'm used to the Xbox One controller, so that that would be easy for me as a transitional thing. And then next, they started showing stuff, again, that we had already saw in the ad, talking about how the console turns into a tablet or a handheld. And they showed a guy with the Switch on like one of the most cramped places imaginable on an airplane. And now, you know, looking at this video or the picture that I have, this guy's his elbow is going to get hit like all the time. I don't think that's the appropriate place for it, but maybe you can pull it off. Then they showed how I would absolutely be playing the console for 99% of the time I would play it, which is on the TV from my couch with the pro controller. 
Pro Controller. They announced the launch date, which is March 3rd, which is pretty soon, actually. And I, I was excited for that news. And it'll retail in the US for $300, which when you first look at the size of the console, you're like, wait, what? But you have to consider that it's essentially a console. It's a handheld and a tablet all in one. So the price seems pretty reasonable when you consider it like that. Although I do have to ask, like, what is the resolution of the tablet? Uh, I took a strong note here from the lack of any technical talk. Nothing about the frame rate, resolution of the games, what will they be at? Obviously, I'm not expecting 4K from the Switch, even though this is where currently technology is at right now. But I do have to wonder, are the games going to be played at 30 frames per second? Or are we going to get actually 60 frames per second? in 1080 you know they also confirmed that there will be a paid online gaming service similar to xbox live or playstation plus they also confirmed the console will be they also confirmed that the console will not be region locked for you know those that care next they talked about past nintendo hardware products stating the switch is going to inherit all of the nintendo's entertainment dna and pack it into this one system However, noticeably missing from the mention is the Virtual Boy. Not surprising given the stigma for that console, but it also confirms maybe no VR. Next, they redundantly listed out the modes that you can play with the Switch. That being TV mode, which is what I will be generally playing the console experience with. You know, Xbox, PlayStation type TV with the console in hand, Pro Controller. The next is like the table mode, they're calling it, uh, or tabletop mode. It's essentially the tablet that's propped up with a kickstand and the Joy-Coms, which separate they separate it away from the handheld console and then it, and then there's also the just the handheld version which is the tablet with the two joy coms together they also stated that the battery life was going to be around 2.5 to 6.5 hours so you can expect 2.5 hours probably and that you can play it while charging the, uh, the tablet using a usb type c cord from what i understand the tablet screen is touch screen and you can connect over Wi-Fi with eight other switches or with eight switches together um, over local LAN. Um, next, they went on to show the Joy-Con control in depth, uh, showing it on the stage floor. It's at this time that I realized how absolutely tiny the controller is. The gentleman on the stage is not large and the controller's width barely seemed to be larger than his palm. I have a feeling that if I was to play the Joy-Con um, in its intended configuration, I'd feel like a gorilla holding, you know, a normal controller. Luckily, I'll be using the Pro Controller, which again, they only seem to show brief glimpses of with no real specs on it at all. Like I said, they went into a lot of detail on the Joy-Con controller. Um, the analog sticks on each side are buttons, similar to how an Xbox or PlayStation controller acts. Um, the right side has an Amiibo reader for those with the Amiibos. And they also have a screenshot button, which you can take, which you press and can take a picture, a screenshot. And yes, that's screenshot, a still image, not video. For now, they state that in the future, it will capture video, but who knows? I have to mention that, and that, that was with them off the grip also. Um, they're, when they're off the grip, they're even smaller. I can imagine in some households that they could even, even get lost as children play with them because of those little tiny joy cons and they do have a gyro and accelerometer to track movement they also have super tiny shoulder buttons like little fleas i mean they, they showed a close-up of these buttons and they have to show a close-up to for you to even see them and they're not even half the width of the, a guy's finger they claim the the switch comes with two controllers but they're counting each side of the Joy-Con as one individual controller. They also have neon blue and neon red colors for the Joy-Con specifically. So, you know, now kids can fight over the blue remote every time that they play. They also have straps for the tiny Joy-Cons so that you don't lose them or, uh, you know, throw them or whatever. I assume that similar to the Wii remote, you know, no one will use these except for when you're at somebody's house who just got a new TV and they're like super anal about anyone wearing them so that they don't throw them into the TV as if that ever happened anyway. I should mention that when you slide the wrist straps onto them, it adds an additional piece, which does make them bigger and it increases the shoulder button size, which is nice. Makes them a nice actual moderate size. It's still smaller than a PlayStation or Xbox controller, like as we enjoy in modern, you know, controllers. 
but at least it's something you can put your finger on. Next, they talked about a motion IR camera built into the right Joy-Con controller, which can sense like shapes and motions and distance. They toted that this will make for new and unique tr control styles possible. The Joy-Con can also somehow convey itself as another object in your hand. They, they gave an example in the presentation as you could feel as if the Joy-Con was a glass cup and it had ice cubes in it and you could even count how many ice cubes were in it by shaking it and you could feel the sensation of the ice cube shaking within the glass cup that you're holding which is the Joy-Con remote. They're calling this feature HD Rumble. Then they showed their first game in this presentation uh, which is a game called 1-2 Switch. I'm using the Joy-Cons, two players face each other as kind of like an American Western standoff and they pull out their imaginary guns holding the Joy-Cons to shoot each other in a sort of like draw like style. I think people will have loads of fun with this game for about 67 seconds until then they, they'll get bored. You can add another additional 67 seconds if you are intoxicated. They, they played a video of the similar two person face off, but for other things like sword duels, wand duels like Harry Potter, guitar duels, keep away duels, hashtag broken joy common making, telephone <laughs> calling duels, and beard shaving duels. Like, but why would anyone want to participate in anything like that is beyond me. They also seem to want to stress to you that you don't have to look at the screen when you play these games. In fact, they're, they're intended for you not to. It's, it's intended that you'll be looking at your opponent with VR headgear, you might ask? No, with the power of imagination. 1-2 Switch seems to be this console's Wii Sports, but I have my doubts that it'll be as good as like Wii Bowling. And next they mentioned a game called ARMS which is like a boxing game where you try to hit your opponent and dodge attacks with the punches, but the punches are also shooting like they extend across the arena. So you'll have some time to look at this game because it's not gonna be out until uh, spring. Next, they showed off Splatoon 2, which I assume is super fun if you're under the age of 14. It's at this point that I, in the conference that I started to understand that Nintendo is not developing for my demographic that being bald middle-aged dude with no friends but if you do have friends that regularly come over to your home i'm sure this conference was super fun at 30 minutes and 20 seconds in the conference they finally mentioned the pro controller in that it can be used to play splatoon 2 as well as the joy con next they show super mario odyssey which doesn't look much different from Super Mario 64 that I played as a kid 21 or so years ago. To me, it looks like a remastered Super Mario 64, you know, with HD graphics. Granted, with new levels, because everything featured in this new game is uh, different areas, it looks more like a real world urban cities than it does like the Mushroom Kingdom, which actually kind of makes me a little sad. I get that there's a market for this. You know, Mario's still beloved. It's just, it's just not for me. You know, when I hear about a new game in a franchise, I, I hope that it's an expansion to an, ex an already existing storyline. Now, Odyssey does look like it has some new gameplay features, so that's great, right? Such as Mario throwing his hat and you being able to like jump on it. I saw him riding like a tiger or something, so that's great. But my takeaway from it was that the, from the trailer at least, is that Mario Odyssey isn't gonna be continuing any kind of story elements or introducing any. Now, during the conference, my buddy Dutch Fan Action disagreed with me. Uh, you can check out his YouTube channel, uh, link down in the description below. And he basically asked why anyone would play, say, Halo 5 over Halo 1, because in the same vein that I was complaining about, because they're the same, essentially, he was saying. So I'm gonna take him up on that challenge. Uh, now, granted, I don't love Halo, it's all right. I, I, I get them, I beat the story, you know, I follow it, and it's mainly for the story that I do. And I'd actually love to challenge that uh, the story does not exist within Mario. Mario collects stars, he defeats Bowser to save Pe Princess Peach, right? But why does Bowser take Peach? Uh, what does it get him? What, what do the stars do? And these are the questions that I, I just don't find answers to when I play the games and the, that I feel like there's no true story to Super Mario. Things in the game happen, yes, but 
Why? What's the motivation? Now, let's take Halo for instance. Halo has a story, much to this may of those probably who don't play the games. You see, the precursors... Who are essentially like an alien super advanced race of beings, uh, so advanced that they make them seem like gods, really. Uh, anyway, they create more life in the galaxy so that they're less lonely, so there's stuff going on, right? Uh, and then eventually... Uh, it's like, uh, it's like, uh, Twenty minutes later. So, um, they covered up that, hu that humans by declaring war on the humans, so trying to get rid of them, right? So the elites end up fighting out the prophets of Orion, and they turn against them, and splitting the covenant, and uh, the elites join the humans. I'm, I'm going to stop there. This is all just within Halo 1 and, like, 2. Um, there are, like, four other games. So, you know, I'm going to stop. But Nintendo is capable of story. I know this because Zelda has story, right? The world of Hyrule was created by, like, three goddesses. And the Triforce is created, uh, which is essentially an extension of their power. And there's this, like... Uh, perpetual, perpetual struggle with Ganon, who is uh, continuing reincarnation of evil, trying to get all of the Triforces, where Princess Zelda is always the incarnation of good, and trying to protect them um, from Ganon, and then Ganon all seems to capture her or overcome her, and then Link is always the hero of destiny that kind of comes up from nowhere, and then slays Ganon, uh, rescuing the princess, or just helping her out, or helping her little oracle people, or whoever, and then, um, you know, everything goes back into normal, Zelda keeps protecting the thing. Cycle repeats over and over again, right? But each cycle is a little different, um, the land of, of Hyrule changes over the course of time, different characters are added, and these different races, and so forth. Anyway, um, I, I could discuss it a, a, all day, right? Um, but I digress that I'll show you these two Mario games um, that I've been talking about side by side and then I'll show you Halo 1 and Halo 5 just for a graphical comparison um, which I do mention that there is story driven content for Halo not for Mario um, and by the way <clears throat> Halo 1 and 5 only a 14 year development difference right um, whereas in Mario uh, Super Mario 64 and uh, Odyssey have a 21 year difference I say this because you would think after a 21 year difference there would be obvious changes or obvious like graphical updates you know to some extent um they wouldn't be just the same but you be the judge um those are just my thoughts on the upcoming mario game due out holiday of 2017 next they announced xenoblade 2 which i believe uh jrpg fans and anime fans will love um and you'll sure get your money's worth as if it's even close to the same gameplay time as the first xenoblade which averaged about 92 hours um you know you're gonna you're, it's gonna be some time play um they followed xenoblade 2 with a re really quick trailer for fire emblem warriors uh no gameplay was shown but it's an rpg franchise that's beloved by so many so i'm sure somebody was really excited about it um next they announced there's about 80 games currently in development for the switch which will hopefully mean many of the games that you expect to come out on both like say xbox one and playstation 4 are also going to be out for this nintendo um they confirm dragon quest 10 and 11 will be on the switch in japan um they did specify in japan so i don't know if they're coming to the u.s but we'll see um as well as Dragon Quest Heroes 1 and 2. Uh, next, they showed a sprite-based RPG called Project or uh, Octopath Traveler. Um, you know, I don't know much about it. Uh, sorry. Next, they announced Skyrim, um, which is coming for to the Switch. Yes, that game that came out in, in 2011, about six years ago. Yeah, that, that will be on the Switch. Um, I'm sorry. Uh, I mean, at this point, um, you know, they didn't even call it remastered or special edition. So I assume it's even the original Skyrim, not the, the newer version. I mean, and they just branded it just Skyrim. So I don't know how else, what else to take from that. Um, I mean, I've already played this game in three different versions, um, from the PlayStation three, when it originally came out to playing it on PC, to playing the special edition on PC, it just feels a little late for this, um, but I'm going to stay positive and hope, hey, maybe pray, pray uh, that actually they do something interesting, like maybe sword swinging with the, the motion controls of the you know Joy-Cons or maybe uh, just some more interactive experience. They also turn to third party developers to speak and the poor translator at this point uh, started having problems keeping up with one of the CEOs. Um, it was, it was clear that kind of the rest of the conference was pre-scripted, um, but his presentation may not have been, um, it was, it was a little hard to watch, um, what 
and what he was saying it was hard to to even convey um but he was talking about indie developers and spinning that it, it's going to be easier to develop on the switch presumably than the other consoles it seemed like um then ea presented and guess what fifa will be on the switch who knew right like like it's not on every single platform ever including like mobile and any other handheld and so forth the main presentation ended with a trailer showing just a bunch of games like dragon ball z uh different rpgs skyrim mario uh, sonic fifa logos uh or sorry legos um S street fighter um minecraft f-zero um mario kart and just a ton of games they just it was just a collage back and forth um they then confirmed that the switch will come with um or they then confirmed what the switch will come with which confirmed my fears uh, because the pro will not be included with the main console given the lack of interest in this controller i'm hoping that there's going to be some sweet high quality like third party controllers that that come with it because i'm guessing um that i'm going to be doing about 99 percent of my gameplay on the couch with the tv wanting this controller in hand um now for the most part this entire press conference happened um they they didn't talk about this controller but they saved the best for last the Zelda portion of the presentation. Now they confirmed Zelda is going to be a launch title with the switch coming out March 3rd. So that's amazing. They also showed more footage of the game and man, I, I just cannot wait. <sighs> um, this is the game that I'm buying the switch for, um, you know, it's open world gameplay approach that, um, you know, it's just a new Zelda experience that I'm, I'm really, really looking forward to. Um, I, I, I felt that, um, I kind of feel like it's like a, a, a new wonder for me to experience. Uh, and I feel the same like anticipation that I felt when the original Ocarina of Time was being announced and talked about in, like Nintendo power and so forth. So, uh, talking about the world would take up a whole, I mean, talking about this, this game in general, this one Zelda game would take up a whole video in itself and I'd love to make it sometime. Um, but needless to say, um, there was a reason they left this till the very end because man, it's so good. Anyway, um, thank you for staying with me. Um, please like subscribe. And again, please share out the video if you enjoyed it. Um, I, again, I, um, I didn't want to be too negative with, with Nintendo just, um, for the, what I want to play a console with, it's not really what Nintendo's going for, and that's cool, man, because I know there there are people that do like it, and I'm just telling you my personal impression of it as a person that does like that sing in front of a console kind of kind of entertainment, um, not really like a party atmosphere or anything like that. But if you're looking for fun uh, game party type environments, then Nintendo Switch is really going to do a lot, I, I think.